Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB and you seem to love the last video I made like this one. So let's go ahead and just run it again. Here are some extremely useful iPhone tips and tricks that you can do right now. So let's go ahead, roll the intro and jump right in. Alrighty, so first up at number one is adding these two very useful shortcuts onto your home screen. You can see I have shutdown and restart right on my home screen. Now these are not default options on the iPhone. You actually have to build these inside of the shortcuts application. So inside of shortcuts, if you click on add a new shortcut, then click on add action, then search for shutdown. You can click on it right there. It's under scripting. And then you can see also if we click on the shutdown text in blue, we're able to change it if we want to shut it down or restart the iPhone. Now I applied the name, I applied the icon, and I also have the restart option as well. So for your convenience, I'm going to have both of these shortcuts linked in the description down below. That way you guys don't have to build them from scratch. Next up at number two is for the clock application. There is actually a really useful hidden feature inside of clock that allows you to change what your iPhone does when a timer ends. So you're probably used to the default behavior of when a timer ends on your iPhone, it's just gonna play a normal ringtone, but you're actually able to scroll to the very bottom and you can see we have an option that says stop playing. So essentially what this is going to do is when your timer runs out, it is going to stop playing whatever is on your iPhone. So whether you wanna fall asleep to some music or whether you just wanna watch maybe exactly an hour of YouTube before bed and then have your iPhone remind you it's time to quit, you can have stop playing when your timer ends and that way your iPhone is gonna stop whatever media is playing on your iPhone when that timer finishes. So next up at number three is turning off a pretty annoying, or at least I find it annoying feature on the iPhone. So you know when you're sharing something, your iPhone gives you all of these recommendations at the top row? Well, I might not wanna airdrop it or I might not wanna text it to any of these people. I find that the recommendations sometimes, or I'd say maybe half the time, just aren't really that accurate. So there actually is a way to turn this off and give your share sheet a bit more breathing room. So inside of settings, you wanna scroll down and then click on Siri and search, and then scroll down and then turn off show when sharing. Now, if I go back to this photo and then I click on share again, you can see it looks a lot cleaner. We only have that single row of icons and we also have a bit more room. It freed up a bit more space at the bottom of the screen to show us a bit more options here at the bottom. So if you don't want those recommendations when sharing, turn that off inside of settings and your share sheet is gonna look a lot more clean. Next up is taking advantage of what's called quick actions inside of Spotlight. So inside Spotlight, you're probably familiar with the option to search for any application. But if you search for specific applications, you're actually able to get some quick shortcuts right next to the application. So I'll show you what this looks like. If I search for clock, you can see I have the option to open my clock app, but I also have the option to set a timer right from Spotlight inside of here. Also, if I search for photos, for example, I can open photos, but I can also choose to open my recent photo, my favorites album, and also my places album. So I'll show you how this works for one more application. If I search for camera, for example, you can see I have the option to open my camera, but I can also launch right into the selfie camera or start recording a video right from Spotlight Search. So I'd say that these quick actions inside of Spotlight are definitely overlooked and you should be using them a lot more on your iPhone. Alrighty, next up is for the emoji keyboard. I'll just use a Safari for an example. I'll go to my emoji keyboard. Now you probably know it's quite difficult to find the perfect emoji on the iPhone just because there are so many. Luckily we have the search option here at the top, but I also like to use the quick scroll. So if I click on the emoji key, a lot of people don't know you can do this. If you take your finger and drag at the very bottom of the screen, you can see you're able to quickly scroll through all of your different emojis. So this makes it a lot faster to find your exact uh, category of emoji that you're looking for. Alrighty, this next one is probably my favorite one of the entire video. On my lock screen right here, you can see I have four shortcuts to four different applications. If I click on this one, I can launch settings. If I click on this one, I can launch Safari. And then if I open this one, I can do Twitter and so forth. So I'll show you how you can do this. This one is once again using shortcuts. So we'll go ahead and open up shortcuts. And it is very, very simple, just as it was with the shutdown and restart options. You can see I have all of my shortcuts right here, open messages, open Safari and so forth. So if you just click on the plus icon and then click on add action, you wanna search for open app. Then you click on this. And then when you see app, you can choose whichever application you want on your iPhone. And that's pretty much it. 
and then you're able to choose your app icon and you can name it. And then inside of your lock screen settings, if you click on customize and then go to lock screen, click on your widgets, you can then see if we scroll all the way down, we have our shortcuts right here. And then you're able to choose whichever shortcut you just built in the application. So I was able to build four separate shortcuts that quickly launch all of my applications. And then with one press, I'm able to open my app right from the lock screen. This next one I wanna show you allows you to get a little bit more peace of mind and security on your iPhone. So you'd be surprised at just how much stuff can be accessed on your iPhone, even when your iPhone is locked. For me, the number one thing is control center. But luckily there's an easy way you can shut everything off if you want nothing to be accessed on your iPhone when it's locked. So inside of settings, click on face ID and passcode. Then once you've entered your passcode, scroll all the way to the bottom and you can see we have allow access when locked. If you want, you can turn off all of these. For me, I have control center turned off because like I said, I don't want someone messing with my iPhone settings when I'm not around, but you can choose to disable live activities, Siri, home control, pretty much everything if you want your iPhone to be completely shut down until you unlock it. So I definitely recommend checking out these settings inside of your security options. And next up is for Safari. So this is a feature called Safari Profiles. So Safari Profiles allows you to pretty much have two different versions of Safari based on what you're going to be doing. So the most logical thing for me would be I have a work profile and then I have a personal profile. Why would you wanna use this? Well, say for example, at work you have your own, I don't know, Google account. When you're using that work profile, when you go to google.com, it's gonna sign in using the correct account. And then when you switch over to your personal profile, it's gonna use your personal Google account. You can see it says profiles allow you to keep your browsing separated. So you may wanna set up a profile for work or school. So I'll click on new profile. I'll just call this one work. And I'll put that icon right there and then I'll click on done. So now when I go ahead and open up Safari and then click on tabs, you can see we have a new button here at the very bottom. If I click on this, I'm able to switch between my personal, which is my default start page, and I can also go into work right here. You can see the color is a little bit different, and uh, this is now my work profile. So everything I do in here is going to be stored under this profile, nothing is going to be saved in my personal profile. And like I said, it's just kind of a nice way to keep your browsing separated between work and personal. And I definitely recommend checking out this feature. Alrighty, so now to finish the video, I wanna do some rapid fire tips. Inside of FaceTime settings, if you scroll all the way down, you can turn on eye contact, which is going to use some really cool AI to mimic eye contact in a FaceTime call. And inside of the phone application, I can't do it now because I'm doing a screen recording, but inside of the phone application, if you have just dialed a number recently, you don't have to redial it or go into your recents. All you have to do is press on the dial button again, and it's gonna fill in that number at the very top. And this one is also pretty cool. Whenever you are clicking on a link in Safari on your iPhone, if you press with two fingers instead of one, it's gonna open that link in a separate tab. And then finally, if you use public transit a lot, go into settings and then click on wallet and Apple Pay. Then click on express transit card and then choose your credit card. This way you're gonna be able to quickly tap your iPhone and authenticate to get onto public transit without even scanning with Face ID. Alrighty, so that's gonna do it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it informative, entertaining, helpful, anything, please drop a like on the video as it does help us out quite a bit. With all that said, my name is Michael. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.